hashtag librarians. Not just because y'all cute and brainy. That goes for you guys too. But because you folks are the first line when it comes to things like the New York Times bestseller list. And people don't give you credit because you don't sell books directly. See, then I know how it is because I've had too many people come up the lines to me and say, oh, have mercy. <laughs> they come up to me in lines and said, I've been trying to get your book. I don't have enough money. But that book is on hold. Every time I go in there, the Paul Webber books is on hold. Now, I don't know what you're saying in them books, but I get to read one. And I basically tell them, I just tell them a story about Queens, New York most of the time. I mean, baby mama drama had to do with Petersburg, Virginia, where I went to college. But for the most part, I write stories that are based in Queens, and I write about things that I know. Um, I'm, I have an MBA in marketing. So a lot of people read my titles and they go, player haters, baby mama drama, I ain't gonna read that. But what it is about my books are that I write about real people. And because I'm a marketing major, I pick topics and subjects. I write around subjects and titles more so because those are the type of things that interest us as African Americans. You know, maybe you aren't the kind of person that would read a book that said called Baby Mom Drama, but there are a lot of people that said, well, I got a lot of that going on right now myself. And when I wrote the book Married Men, it was because during that period of time I was going through some marital problems. You know, the interesting thing about the books that I've written, you know, my first book was Looking for Love, then I wrote Married Men, I wrote Baby Mom and Drama, I wrote Player Haters, and I wrote The Preacher's Son, then I wrote So You Call Yourself a Man, and then I wrote The First Lady. So it all started because I was looking for love, then I was a married man. I had baby mama drama. <laughs> After that, I was playing Hayden. I went to, 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 to Allen Church and was the preacher's son for a minute there. Then I called myself a man, and then I was back in church with the first lady. Right now, I'm writing a book uh, called Something on the Side that comes out in January. <laughs> But something on the side is an interesting book because um, I got so many people writing me saying, how come you're the only one that writes books about people that ain't size four? Because I don't know no size four. <laughs> but what I decided to do was I decided to write a book like no one's ever written a book. And I, I'm writing a book about four women that are plus size women. And because I remember my father telling me when I was younger, he said, you know, I, you know, we're kids. So you look at a person that's a couple of sizes bigger and you got to laugh, you know, he said, oh, she big. My daddy said, you ever see a big woman that didn't have a whole bunch of children following? So I had to think about that. <laughs> there was somebody that was with that big woman. And there was something that I needed to learn about those big women. But what I've done is I've written a book called Something on the Side, and basically, as far as I'm concerned, Something on the Side is a plus-size sex in the city. Uh, it is. It's about four women living in Queens, New York, and they belong to the Big Girls Book Club. Can't be, if you're not at least a size 14, you can't be a mother. You can be an honorary mother, but you got to take your skin behind home at the end of the week. So that's what I'm working on right now. But um, you know, I just want to say thank you to you folks because, like I, you know, there's nothing like a librarian. I spent most of my younger days on Merritt Boulevard in, in the library in Queens, New York. And um, you know, I, I just love literature. I love books. I never thought I would ever be a writer because, like, like you said earlier, I was a really bad English student. Very quick mind. Very quick when it comes to business. But I wasn't you know, motivated by, you know, semi-cola and stuff like that. <laughs> Still not taking a this. <laughs> but I do love books, and I've always been the kind of person that read three or four books, and, and for me it's very unfortunate that I can't read as many books as I used to because I'm working so hard, you know, trying to keep this business thing going. But um, my kids, you know, all three of them, 
very, very. We get a masterpiece. Oh. <laughs> My kids are very, very bright, and they all go to the library. It's the first thing they, that, that we do every Thursday night is we go to the library together. And um, they come home with stacks of books. And I yell because one of them always seems to forget to bring the book back. <laughs> they have ten books and be like, I can't find the ninth book. <laughs> I pay a lot of, lot, of, lot of late fees. You always find a book, but I pay a lot of late fees. So I want to let you know that you're all really, truly appreciated. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much.